Today I'm making vacuformers. My highest pledging patron requested a helmet that requires vacuforming. Vacuforming is a method used to make many lightweight duplicates of armor and props for movies, as well as airplane canopies. Not, not a can. There we go. I have fired my joke writer. Making this out of pegboard, which you can buy or check behind any store ever. It's, uh, it's what most shelves are made of. I cut up some scrap wood for a platform. Since this is scrap, it's a little bit warped, which means any seams I'm gonna need to also fill. I have to drill a hole for the vacuum nozzle, so I trace the end onto the wood, and then I drilled the hole with a proper sized hole saw attachment, or at least tried to, but my batteries were dead. Finished up when it was charged, did a test fit, and glued that in place. But not before tracing the box onto the pegboard. I held the parts in place while the glue dried using clamps and a 123 book. Hey guys, I'm not paying for 123 blocks. <laughs> not until, maybe when Patreon is at like 800, then maybe, maybe I can justify that. While it dried, I cut up the pegboard with the saber saw. That's uh, all the things. That's safe. Ah, oh, look at that. I am gonna have to do so much cleanup on the belt sander. It's not even funny. God, I miss my table saw day. So I recut that, but this time I wore my respirator because this pegboard is cutting like MDF, which leads me to believe that it is MDF, which is toxic, so masks. But Jake, your filters are down to 17%. Fire phasers. I'm not sure that helps. Let's not put the saw on the floor. I clearly messed up right there but I also messed up about the same amount on the other side in the opposite direction. So this might be salvageable. However, uh, if it's not, I have the opportunity to mess up like 57 more times. Uh, oh, wow, nice save. It'll take a day for the glue to dry once I get the pegboard on it. So I wanna fill in that seam now so that everything is dry when it needs to be. And to avoid another day of waiting for a seam to dry, I sanded the top surface flush. Then I glued it in place. When it dried, I cut off the flash, then sanded what was left of the flash and rounded the edges to keep them from piercing the plastic. Just to make it even more airtight, I wrapped it in duct tape. I cut up old toaster oven trays to use as a frame for the smaller platform. This will eventually hold the plastic sheets for that. Safety gear. Some people like to attach the frame to the platform with hinges, but I think that that makes it harder to get a good seal. The really professional industrial ones actually have the trays attached above the platform via guide rails, but that's not necessary for one this small. I'm not gonna need it for this video or even the helmet DIY, but maybe I'll need one in the future. I started sanding out the bottom of the tray and went through three drill bits before I finally switched to tin snips. I mean, I did need to to use the sanding bits for at least half of it before I could use the tin snips. My thinking when I built this one is be a good way to replicate small detail pieces, specifically lenses. A lot of time with prop making, it's a struggle between making a prop that looks heavy but is really light. And anytime you can replace glass with plastic, just instantly way lighter and safer. So with the small surface area platform, it's possible to vacuum form with, with absolutely no tray and solo cups. Plates, plates, sorry still in college mode. I heated those up with my heat gun, like my festive oven mitt, and press the plate onto the platform. You'll notice that I'm continuing to apply heat until I get a good seal. So this little platform is for the small detail parts on the droids that I make, but for the helmet that the patron requested, I need to make a much larger one. Yeah, look at that. And because I had so much left over, I made a larger one. I made a wooden frame to staple the plastic to may not have thought this through. I did have to make one this big though to accommodate my DRDs. Shoot. If I turn it diagonal, it just barely fits, but that's probably not gonna be good enough. I think I need an inch of clearance on all sides. Luckily, I still have enough pegboard left over for an even larger one. After that initial trial run, I painted these with black latex house paint. I'm gonna be honest, this is really more of an aesthetic choice than um, a necessary part of the structure, but I mean, it's a latex paint. It's gotta help a little bit, right? Plus, I bought this paint with the patron's money for the alien xenomorph suit, so I'd feel really terrible if I didn't use it on a build. All right, those are dry, so I'm gonna test out the large one now. I don't really know how to demonstrate what's going on here without a heating element for the large one, so hang on. There we go. Look at that, look at the fog. Yeah, so that, but backwards. So my mini shop back does not provide nearly enough suction to make this work on a large enough scale for the helmet that I'm trying to build, so. Hey, 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then you can send help because I'm dying in space. But seriously, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of my future video uploads. Consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can keep making these videos. And until the next one comes out, you can check out any of my hundreds of past tutorials. All right, see you later. Thanks for watching.